Good morning, I'm Reva with Quality Sewing and Vacuum and I'm so excited to be here and I'm so excited that you're here with us too. Today on our Facebook Live, we're going to see how to be more creative using your scanning cut. So I know a lot of people have a scanning cut, so we're gonna explore some basic things and we're gonna answer some questions to so whatever your heart desires. I do wanna invite you to come into one of our stores. We have 11 stores in Western Washington in the Puget Sound area, and we have lots of accessories and fun things that go along with your scanning cut and we have folks in the stores that love using them and can help answer your questions if you live out of our area go to our website at qualitysewing.com and take a look at the accessories that are listed there or pick up a scanning cut now let's answer the first question that's a big one if you don't know what a scanning cut is I'll explain it this is an electronic cutting machine that will cut built-in shapes, built-in patterns, and things like that. But it also has a built-in scanner. That's why it's called a scan and cut, because it can take a picture of what you're working with, and it will create a cut file based on what you put underneath it. So put in the bed of the machine. It's so awesome. So if you love doing applique, but you don't like cutting out the pattern, let the scanning cut do it for you. Um, I know a lot of paper crafters who like doing rubber stamps or card making and scrapbooking. They love using those images, but the dies can be expensive, so why not let the scanning cut cut it out for you? And of course, teachers love the scanning cut for all the projects that they do for their classroom. So if you have questions, please feel free to type those in the box and we will get to as many as we can or all of them hopefully and so shall we get started i don't have the scanning cut plugged in yet or i mean turned on so i'm going to turn it on and there's just a little on button right here now the scanning cut is there's different versions this happens to be the disney scanning cut which means it has built-in Minnie and mickey and disney designs which is really cool Okay, so here is the scanning cut, and it comes up just with this regular screen. So if you see that on yours, that's okay. It is made by Brother. That's why it has such a high-quality scanner in it. And I think I'm going to pause just for a second and see, are there any questions? Yes. So Tamara is asking, can you scan a picture and make a PES file for embroidery? Oh, that's a lovely question, Tamara. This is... Um, so not quite, but you're gonna like what I have to say. So if you have a photograph and you want to create an embroidery design, you need one of two things. You either need software to create that or a machine like the Luminaire that can create it for you. Now, I will say the Brother PES design, um, PE design software and the Babylock palette software both have beautiful photograph capabilities. Oh, and if you have Floriani, that was a free update in the last update that we got on our Floriani software is the photo stitch capability. Absolutely gorgeous. So this does not create that. However, if you have a design on an applique design, for example, that you have on your machine, uh, your Luminaire, your Solaris, your uh, a brother or baby lock branded machine, you can save that to your USB stick and this machine can read that line, the PES file. So you can use that in here. So it's going from the machine to here, but not from here to the machine. Does that make sense, Tamara? I hope that helps. And if you want to do photographs, oh, the photo stitch is so beautiful and has such stunning results. And you know what? The best part about that is it's a one, two, click, easy. Maybe we should do a Facebook Live on that someday because it's way, way easy. Um, but let's see. Are there any other questions as we get going? Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the machine. Okay, so on the machine, you're gonna see a couple different things. This is the platform that we're gonna scan and put our materials in through. We have a little carrier here that carries our blade, holder and blade. And did you see how easy that was to put in? You just lift that up, take out the tool. It can't go in any way but the correct way. And then you just flip the little lever down and it's seated and ready to go. And then we have a little toolbox here, which is pretty handy. We have toolboxes under here. 
where you keep your blades and things, but all the fun happens here and here. So to wake this little guy up, all I have to do is touch the screen and it's going to uh, calibrate the, um, the rollers here. So that's pretty cool. Now it's ready to go. So I think what I want to do is just start off right off the bat and show you something cool that it does. Now, bear with me a couple of things. We are in an open store. The, the customers are coming in. There's, you know, machines being picked up and things like that. So there may be some background noise. So if for any reason it gets too noisy and you can't hear me, uh, let me know. I'll speak louder. And then also I have samples all over the place and supplies all over the place. So I'm going to be like all over the place. So just bear with me. Okay. So let me find the first one I want to show you. Okay. So this is a really fun little image that I uh, found on the internet and it's just some paper dolls. Okay. And this is my, my turquoise mat is my low tack mat. I, like that for paper because then it the paper's not permanently affixed to the mat. Your mats do come with a plastic cover and this is a really good thing to keep a hold of because you don't want all your cat and dog hair delinting your mat. So make sure you keep that handy so when you're done you can put it right back on. Okay, so what I'm going to do is set this right in the channel here. There's little grooves that keep the mat where it needs to go. And then I'm going to have it load the mat just by pushing this button here. And it's going to load the machine. Now, one thing about the new um, DX machines, which this is, this is the um, SDX230D machine. It has an auto blade, so it's going to automatically sense the thickness of the material that we're cutting so it won't cut all the way through the mat. So no longer do you have to figure out how deep your blade needs to be. The machine will do it for us. And it, the D on the end of this one means it's a Disney machine, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do scan. Now under scan, there's a couple of choices. There's direct cut and scan to cut data. Direct cut means I wanna cut it out right now. Scan to cut data means I want to scan it and I wanna save that shape into my machine so I can use it again later and use it over and over. So for example, if you have a really cute rubber stamp that is a heart for Valentine's Day and you're gonna make 1,500, oh, you have a lot of friends if you have 1,500 Valentines you're gonna make, but you wanna use that shape over and over, you can scan it the one time and then you can save that into memory, okay? And I'll show you something else that I saved into memory in, in a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to direct cut this because I just want to cut out my paper doll the one time. And it asks me where do I want to get the image from and I want the machine to bring it in on, um, I want the machine to find it. I do want to go back though. Do you see this? This is a Wi-Fi signal symbol. Do you see that? So I can send things from my computer via Wi-Fi but I don't have that hooked up. This is a Wi-Fi capable machine, but I don't have mine hooked up right now. So I'm just gonna go here, and this is a color image that's great. So I'm gonna say start, and it's automatically gonna bring the mat in, and it's using the built-in scanner to see what's on my mat, and then it's going to give me the ability to cut that out. Reva, Linda is wondering if we'll, if she will be able to watch this session again. Oh, absolutely, Linda. Um, you can, you'll be able to find it on our Instagram, on our Facebook, and you'll also find it on our YouTube channel um, once it renders and it gets posted. So yes, watch to your heart's content. <laughs> And sometimes, you know, you, you know how to do something, but you just need that little extra oomph on how to do it. So um, just feel free to look back as much as you want. And Linda, if you have any other questions, let me know. Okay, so now here is the scan of our little paper doll. And let's say I want to cut out the center dress. All I need to do is touch and drag. If I wanted to cut out the entire thing, I could have left it alone, but I think I just want to cut the center dress and then touch OK. And this works really well if you want to isolate just an item that you are trimming. So now it's going to come, uh, it's recognizing it, it's going to bring it up and there you, hopefully you can see ever so faintly there is a dark line around 
our little dress there. And if you're happy with that, you just say, okay. And now you're going to be able to see, we can change the border. If I want my outline to be farther away to give a margin. So if you are a paper crafter and you work with stamps, you know that dies usually go on the outside of the, um, of the actual line. So you can do that if you want to, if you want it to come in, you can do that too. And I'm just going to go back right on that, the line there and just say, okay. And if you need to do any editing, you can do that, but we're just going to say, okay. And now it wants to know, what do I want to do? We can cut, we can draw. So you can use a pen, you can emboss, you can foil, and you can also do paper piercing. So those are all things that you can do. The ones pass cut and draw, those are all kits that you would get that would activate that capability in your machine. So emboss, foil, and pierce are all um, options that you can get. But I want to cut this out and then I'm just gonna go ahead and start. I trust it, I know it knows what it's doing. So I'm going to go ahead and do, oh, you see what it's doing? It's testing the depth of the mat. Now it's gonna come over here, test the depth of the paper so it knows how thick that paper is. And now it can cut it out with no problem at all. Reva, Heather would like to know, can she cut felt into shapes? Yes, ma'am. So, um, let me see. Let, how about this? We're gonna do fabric next. Oh, look, it's doing it again because the paper is a cardstock. It's a heavy cardstock, and so it knows that it needs to go through twice. We're gonna do fabric next. So Heather, can you hold on a minute, and then we'll talk about fabric all at the same time? Would that be fair? Can you remind me if I forget? I know Carrie will remind me. She's got this amazing brain that remembers stuff. Okay, so then I'm gonna go ahead and let me just peel this up. So here is our perfectly cut little paper doll piece isn't that awesome and that was so much faster than me trying to do this have you ever cut out paper dolls i usually would cut a tab off right <laughs> so anyway lots of fun so i'm going to take that off and let me put my cover back on usually i would take off you know all the paper doll things and stuff like that um, but i'll just set that aside okay so let's talk about fabric for a minute because heather brought it up it's all heather's fault okay so fabric in the machine itself there are tons of things that you can do so first i'm going to go through the patterns and i want to show you that you have patterns and believe me heather i'm getting to fabric but this everything i'm showing you can work on fabric or on paper so we have all these different um, pieces even the disney's in there there's even rhinestone uh, so you can make your rhinestones. Um, but if you want to work specifically with fabric, maybe you want to do applique, maybe you want to quilt. So you can choose uh, these categories and there's tons of different pieces in here and you can choose a block. You can tell it the size you want your finished block to be. So I'll go down here to um, eight inches and say okay then it shows me how many different pieces are needed to make that block. I'll say okay um, oh, I got to choose the piece. I want that piece. And then I'm going to say, okay. And can you see, let's see, I can't zoom in at this particular screen, but it actually added a seam allowance on it for me. So what we can do is draw with a water soluble marker, the sewing line, and then it will cut out on the uh, cutting line. That's a quarter inch away, which is really cool. But let's talk about what kind of fabric you need to use when you're working with a scan and cut. If you want to do the quilting like that, you don't have to starch it. You don't have to do anything. There is a mat that is designed to hold fabric very, very firmly to the surface. So you can use your fabric blade to cut out the fabric. So for example, this is my everyday blade, the black one, and some fabrics, your everyday blade is going to work better. So depending on what it is that you're cutting, if the fine fabric blade doesn't do the trick try your regular blade because sometimes that just works better our fabric blade this is the fine fabric blade and it is beige okay and i'm going to pop that in here and it will it only goes in one way and then i'll lock it in um are there any questions while we're getting going yeah so carolyn asked why didn't it automatically connect to the wi-fi Oh, that's a good question, Carolyn. I'm getting my fabric out here while we're doing that. The reason why this machine did not automatically connect to the Wi-Fi is we never set it up yet. We just haven't done that. So in your house, or like at my house, my Scan and Cut, 
automatically will go to the Wi-Fi because I've set it up. This one just hasn't been set up yet. So it hasn't been told the password to get into the Wi-Fi. So I hope, I hope that answers that question. So it's a simple one. We just didn't do it. You know, there you go. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So this is a piece of fabric. I, I just love this fabric. Can you, can I get in, Carrie? Can you show that how cute that is? Um, this is a piece of fabric. By the way, it's a brand new collection here at the Tuck Willis store. There's a whole collection around this. It's called So Happy. So cute. Anyhow, um, I just thought this would be really cute. And I'm going to do a similar thing like we did with the paper dolls. And then we will be talking about other fabrics. But what I want you to know is whether I was doing that, um, the quilt block like I just showed you adding the seam allowance or if I want to cut out this sewing machine you don't have to pre-treat the fabric because the mat is extra sticky so there's a fabric mat that is beige that mat it's beige right here and beige that matches the cutter okay right now we're out of stock on the fabric mats, so I used a fabric, a high stick fabric carrier sheet that we've had around for a long time. And you put that on a new um, standard mat, and it will hold really well, and it's really, really, really sticky. So it holds the, your fabric in place. And this fabric is right off the bolt. It hasn't been starched or anything. I pressed it so it didn't have a crease in it, but other than that, it has nothing. So we're going to go ahead and go scan. We'll do a direct scan again. And then I'm going to ask it to scan it. And this is kind of, it's a regular quilting cotton, but is a little bit thicker. Um, but it does seem to work really well. If you have something like um, a heavier linen or something like that, that's where you may find the standard blade comes more into play or if it's something that has like an organza or a polyester that might uh, be easier to work with there so I'm just gonna come around this sewing machine and I'm gonna crop as close as I can to the sewing machine because if I can do that then I don't have to do a lot of editing later because I can go in and erase the extra bits and pieces you know, because if I, I don't want to spool in with my sewing machine, I just want to cut that out. So I'm going to say, okay, and let's take a look and see what it does. It will take a couple of seconds for it to do. Oh, it did find it. Oh, look, I don't know if you can see it, but there's no other, there's no other um, black lines in there. So it did, it only saw the sewing machine, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to touch, okay, and then let it process it. And I'm going to say, okay, because I don't need it to stitch. Actually, Let's give it a little bit of a margin because that thread, the little thread there is really, really fine. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a margin so it can cut that out a little easier. And then say, okay, and I want it to cut. I don't want to draw it. I want to cut it. And then I'm going to say start. Okay. All right. So other types of fabrics. Felt. Yes, it can cut felt. And I have a couple of tips for you and then some Im interesting information that I'll allude to, but I'm not going to tell you um, because I can't yet. It's too soon. But um, felt. If you're working with felt and um, there's a couple of different types of felt, you have natural fiber felt like wool or rayon, and then you also have synthetic felts. Uh, and there's bamboo felt too. That's a, that's a natural fiber. But felt are kind of like, if you think about wool, it's a woolly sheep that's been compressed into a sheet, right? So the, the fibers are very spongy, stringy, and they have like a coil, they'll bounce back. Okay, they're like a spring. So I have found it best to stabilize the felt, not to keep the felt flat, but to keep the fibers from being springy. And there's a couple of things that you can use. This is one of my moving moments. If I can find where I put it, it was right here on top. Hold on. I know it's in here. Here it is. So you got a couple of different things. There's Terial Magic, and this is a spray on stabilizer, and you spray it and let it get into the fibers of the felt, and then let it completely dry and dry flat. And then when you um, cut it, it's like cutting a piece of cardboard because the fibers won't spray drag or spring with the blade okay does that make sense um and so that works really really well and it just rinses out and if you're doing any decorative stitches for example say you're doing a sous spargo um 
item with hand embroidery or Christmas ornaments or anything like that, when you use this, it will keep that really nice and stiff so you can do your decorative or your hand embroidery stitches and then it just simply washes out. Does that same process apply to wool fabric? I would think with wool fabric, it would be a similar process uh, because then it would just make everything kind of neutral. I haven't cut out um, like a wool plaid, for example. I haven't done that, but I would think that that would help because that's just the nature of wool. Wool is very um, flexible. It's very springy. So I would think that that would um, be a good practice and not to mention a lot of times like in a, a woven wool with you where you have um, plaids or anything you have thick and you have thinner fibers so you would it would kind of neutralize it okay all right okay so um, that's what I would do for wool now I told you I would give you a couple of tips and then uh, something that's coming but I won't tell you what there are brand new accessories coming for the scan and cut that we're going to be able to tell you about at our what's new parties in September September. So uh, go on our website and take a look for the what's new parties and you will see that this year we are asking that people sign up ahead of time because we're doing limited seating because we still are trying to be as safe as we can and keep our um, our groups of people to a, a, a a very safe level and um, everybody masked up and everything like that. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, so Heather's asking, will the fibers get the machine dirty or linty? Oh, that's a good, if you have, fibers can get the machine linty, yes. Um, if you are thinking specifically again about the wool, if you have the Terial Magic or Perfect Sew in there, it's not going to because the fibers are all stuck together. So it will not. And also, then your mat won't get as linted up and de-stickied because you're using, because um, of that. Um, I will show you in a second. Let's take this off and I'm going to show you, um, I'll show you how to clean your machine. Okay, so I'm going to eject that. Uh, remove that from the, the mat from there and then I'm using the little built-in spatula and see if I can get in there and look at how cute I mean seriously this fabric is the cutest thing and look at how great a job it did on cutting that out and this is just regular quilting cotton no starch no nothing it just cut it like a dream it's fabulous so if you love doing um McKenna Ryan oh I love her patterns I don't enjoy this. I really, really don't. So this is just fabulous for me. I also do some paper crafting. So I do have my, of course, my paper crafting is in my sewing room as well. So I can use my scanning cut for paper, uh, for fabric projects, but it's also right there. So instead of using a die, I can just run it right through and direct cut and cut out all my little images and I'm as happy as a clam. So that's really, it's really fun. So, um, Anyway, cutest fabric. Remember, come in and look for that. It's called So Happy. Um, oh, and if you have friends that are crafty or, you know, that also have scanning cuts, make sure you um, share our, our Facebook Live or our Instagram with them so then they can learn something new, too. Any more questions? Yeah, we have two questions. Deborah would like to know, when will the What's New be on the computer? And Kathleen would like to know, can you cut glitter cardstock? Oh, both excellent questions. Let's start with the first one. So we will be doing a virtual, and I assume that's what you're meaning, the virtual class. And that is, I believe, the last Monday in September, we will be doing live on um, Facebook. Um, so look for us there. And before that, uh, you can go to our website, qualitysewing.com, and see where it is in the stores. Okay, um, and then glitter cardstock, absolutely. Let me grab my little book. Where's my little book? This book has been around, so he's kind of kind of crazy. So I have cut oodles of stuff. Let me see if I can get through. So this had some glitter on it. I know that's not exactly what you're, you're talking about, but here's a full glitter one, and it cut it absolutely beautifully. Oh, look at this. This was just written with a Sharpie marker, and it cut that out. That's pretty cool pretty cool. Um, there's built-in lettering um, and everything, and there's project pages on the Brother website. Oh, and on the Brother um, website, there's a, it's called a 
Canvas Workspace. It's a free program and you can uh, get on there and find lots of projects. The other thing that's really cool about this um, ScanaCut is you never ever have to connect it to computer to work. You can do everything right on the machine. Now here are some of the little pieces that were built in and can you see I had it draw my stitching line here. So you can do needle turn applique if you choose. Here it is with, if you want to use freezer paper for your pieces, you can do that. Um, just, there's lots of stuff, but I think, oh, this was a design from the machine that we sent over and had that there. You can do paper piecing, have it draw your paper piecing um, out, or your foundation piecing, I should say. And this is the one I wanted to show you that I saved into memory. I got this cute little pattern um, for a little doll clothes and I scanned in the bodice into the machine and then copied it and mirror imaged one and then stuck them back together on the machine. So now I have my bodice pieces so when, when I make a little doll dress I have the pieces right in the machine and I don't have to cut them out. Love that, love that. So that turned out, that was really fun. And my book isn't that fascinating but oh here's a project I did with wool felt going back to the question earlier. And it was fabulous because um, my stitches here are machine stitches and they just stitched up beautifully with no puckering. And I have not washed this out so it still is stiff. See how that springs back? It's still stiff because I haven't washed it out but the ones that I actually used as gifts, I did wash. I rinsed that right out. Um, anyway, so you can do cork, Here's another felt. This one never got treated. That was just cut the way it was. Um, and, oh, it can do embossing and stuff like that. So just a few little things in my book. I'm putting that away now. Judy asked, is the So Happy Fabric in all of the stores that have fabric or only in Tukwila? It's in Tukwila, and I think it's in a couple of other ones. It may be in Silverdale. I don't remember right off the top, but I suppose, Carrie, we can go down after this and add that information in the... Facebook post, can't we? Sure. Okay. <laughs> I mean, the stores would know. We'll have to contact the stores. And well, see I have the it. information on oh. my computer, I and I can put that in there, but I can't remember off the top of my head is yes. what I'm saying. Yes, we can. So if we can, that. if I'll just put it then in the notes there. Perfect. So um, so if you're on Instagram, flip over to Facebook to find that, and I'll and I'll put that in because it's really a cute, cute collection. So, but I think I think like I said, Silverdale and maybe Everett. I think so, but that's off the top of my head. So, okay, any other questions? Not right at the moment, okay. So other things that, I'm gonna go back home so we can get back to the beginning. Other things that we can do on here is, um, let me go down here and find, oh, these are cute. We got some applique pieces in here. We have uh, the Dresden plate. We have applique flowers. Lots and lots of fun things there. Alphabets are another really exciting one. So you have some um, really nice uh, collegiate style alphabets. You also have titles. So if you are a scrapbooker, you can come in here and grab titles. So maybe you want to do uh, the travel one. You can come down here and grab something beautiful. Oh, that was pretty. This Believe is really lovely. So that would be fun to do. Now, it came in at two and a quarter inches high by almost six inches wide, which is a nice small size maybe for a scrapbook, but maybe you wanna put it on a shirt because this one you wanna make a Christmas t-shirt. You can make it as big as you can because the cutting field on here is 12 inches wide and you can even get a mat that's 24 inches long. And if you wanna go even bigger than that, you can get the roll feeder and you can use vinyl and things right off of a roll. So this would be really fun to put on a t-shirt. And here is an example of a t-shirt that we did using the scan and cut. And this is using a product called heat set vinyl. So it is um, meant to go on clothing and you can wash it and it doesn't come off. It's not just a sticker. You apply heat to get it to uh, to stick and that is where did I put it you know oh, right here right here in front of my face okay 
So here is an example of one. This is a really beautiful kind of a shimmery turquoise. Um, and this is meant for garments. So if you take a look at the picture down here, see the little pineapple where in the shades that's on a denim uh, piece like an apron or something. And so if you see that, you know, it's for fabric, but it also will tell it say heat transfer vinyl. Okay. So that is meant for clothing or fabric. Okay, here's another example of a heat transfer vinyl. Look at the pretty glitter. That's really fun. And then also I'm going to reach right in front of Carrie. Well, I guess I don't need to because this is here. This doesn't have a shine or a shimmer. It's just a matte color. So we have lots of different colors of vinyl in that. So a heat set vinyl is meant for fabric and you're going to use heat to apply it. If you want to do something on your wall, Okay, then you can use the sticker vinyl, and this is called adhesive vinyl. And it has, um, it's like contact paper kind of, it has the sticker, and then it has a backing that you peel off and you stick it to it. Okay, you get questions? And that was used on the mirror? And that is what was used on the mirror. So that was sticker, this is heat set. If we look over here, the black and white Mickey is the um, sticker. The Mickeys up there are stickers. The mermaid down here on the left, that's, a, that's an artist canvas that you would just get at like Hobby Lobby or something that has been painted or a piece of fabric actually was put over the top of it. And then the mermaid was this beautiful shimmer. The, the sticker vinyl I also use to do the uh, mugs with the enjoy the little things and adventure and weights. And so those are lots of fun. Any questions? So Barbara wanted to know if we can view this later. Okay. Uh, Ruth wanted to know which model we're talking about in the scan and cut. And then Lisa uh, said that she came in late and wants to know if Quality Sewing will be getting the rotary blade kit for the DX models. Okay, so um, we are a full line brother dealer, so anything that is made, we will have. So absolutely. And she she blew my secret. I was trying to keep that for what's new, but that's okay. Um, so yes, there is a rotary blade coming for the DX machines. So yay, lots of fun. So that should be really helpful. Um, for example, if you want to do a fabric that has a sequin on it, it should just run right over the top of it. I haven't got mine in my hands to play with yet, but really excited about that. Um, you can definitely view this later. Come back to Facebook or Instagram and you can watch them again and again and again and again um, but also if you prefer you can go right over to uh, YouTube because we're gonna post it on our channel over on YouTube and did you know on our YouTube channel we have lots of other content we have basic usage lessons and all the other content that we do and how to's are all found there as well and then the other question this is the SDX uh, 230D so it is the auto blade Disney machine but the things that I've showed you all work with any of the auto blade machines um, and auto blade just simply means that the machine figures out how much blade needs to be um, you know poked through to the depth. Yeah, that's good. Carrie's good. She has the official words. I, I just say things. Um, but the depth that the blade needs to be to successfully go through the materials. And by the way, this can cut up to three millimeters in thickness. And there is a little, there's a little uh, guy right here on the side that if you're working with thick fabrics, you can lift it up so it can, it can do like thick foams and things like that. Um, the other, everything else though that I've told you about, if you have the previous to DX machines, just like the uh, 650 or whatever machine you may have, the principles are the same, but you're going to need to set your blade depth yourself for every material that you do. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Roseanne would like to know, can you use any brand of heat transfer vinyl or just brother? Oh, good question. Um, you can use heat transfer vinyl from anywhere. I would test it to make, you know, a little piece just to make sure that it behaves the way that you want it to and that it adheres the way you want it to. Um, I can't speak for all the vinyls that are out there because there's tons of them and I haven't tried them all. So, you know, depending on your iron and your, or your pressing that you have and the requirements of that, 
that uh, material, just do a test. Um, and, and to that a little bit more, um, the vinyl, the heat set vinyl needs to be heat set at a specific temperature and it may be cool peel, it may be hot peel and everything, all the instructions are inside so I can't tell you about that one. So what that means is you need to set your pressing equipment for that particular temperature. If you're on a household or iron, there's a couple things to think about. One, it says cotton, linen, wool, polyester. Google what those degrees are. And everyone's iron's a little bit different, so you, again, the test will come in handy for doing that. You need firm, consistent pressure for the length of time that your vinyl will tell you. So if it's 10 seconds, that means one Mississippi, two Mississippi, don't rush it. And then you lift and move. You don't iron. You press the one spot, lift and move. Household irons have steam holes. That means those areas are not getting adhered because the steam holes don't count. So even though you have the iron here, you're going to have to shift up and cover where the holes were and repress. And I say that because I want you to know to get a, a nice project in the end. But the other thing is if you have a heat press, like an Elma press for doing ironing for your clothes. It's beautiful for doing heat set items because it's one big sole plate and you can press your entire thing in the 15 seconds that it asks for and then you're done because it's 100 pounds of pressure all at one time. And so it's been a lifesaver in my crafting room. So I, I just wanted to mention that. Did I get those? questions answered. Um, if you have any others, just please let me know. Um, the, the thing with vinyl, though, let's say we wanted to do this with vinyl. So I'm going to say set, and then there's something else I want to do before we um, cut it out. So come on in here, Carrie, and take a look. And then remind me, because I do want to show you where you can clean that, because we talked about lint before. Okay, so this is Believe. If I am going to put this on a t-shirt, the adhesive on a the heat set vinyl is on the back side, right? So he is like, this is pretty, and I'm going to cut it with the pretty side down having the heat up, heat activated adhesive up. Okay, so you cut it backwards. So what I need to do is go to edit and I want to edit my object and I want to mirror image it. So it's backwards here. So for garments you and heat set vinyl, you cut it backwards. Then we say, okay, okay again. And before we cut it, I'm going to cut before we cut it, I want to go into my settings and I want to turn on what is called half cut. And what that will do is it will allow the blade, the blade will come and test the mat, then it will come test the, dis, the, the depth of the thickness of the vinyl, and it will only allow the blade to go halfway through because this has a carrier sheet on it. And you don't want to cut all the way through that, you only want to cut the vinyl. So half cut on vinyl is very important. Okay, now I'm going to go back. If I was putting this on a wall, I don't want to mirror image it because you cut with the paper side down and your vinyl on the top. So this you cut the right way. T-shirts and heat set you cut upside down or backwards. Okay, right, backwards, right, backwards, right, backwards. Okay, does that, hopefully that makes sense. And don't worry, you'll only do it wrong a few times. <laughs> So that's how that's how that kind of works and I'm going to move these to the side I want to show you where the cleaning is and then I want to show you how to use um, Pens, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off just because that's the safe thing to do, right? So you're gonna close it up and you tip it up on its back end and then we have down here oh It's in the back. I think on the older uh, scanning cuts, it's right here. There's a little a little area access door where you can get in to clean um, the glass off on. Nope, this one doesn't do it. Look at that. I was telling you it was going to do something, but it doesn't. The older ones have a little place where you can access and clean the glass. But you don't want to scratch that glass. You don't want to rub with anything they should. I would just kind of blow it off. Um, and then just on the back, just so you see, this has a tray that you can bring out so it can support 
your mats as they're coming out the back. So, um, but we do have what is called a maintenance program. So if you're local, you can purchase the maintenance program and then our guys will get in there and make sure it's cleaned off. So if you think that you've been cutting lots of wool or um, lots of glitter paper, you can just gently use some canned air and blow, not straight in, but maybe at an angle. And if there's any debris, it should come right on out. And I would go, this way because otherwise we get caught behind there so I hope that kind of kind of helps and then I have another um, I have another paper so while I'm grabbing that Carrie do you have an, any other questions yeah Kathleen was asking um, do you have any uh, videos on greeting card making greeting card no specific videos on card making um, so put in the um, if you're so hopefully you're still there um, can you be a little bit more specific on what about greeting cards you would like to know? Okay. All right. So let's look at this little piece right here. This is just a photocopy of an item, you know, that the store was doing, which is really cute. And this is a scanning mat. So those of you who have done photocopies, remember the library used to go and make photocopies? Um, this is kind of like that. It has the little care cover sheet that protects that, and this is not at all sticky. So you can scan things over and over using this without uh, de-stickying, if that's a real word, getting your mat less tacky. So I'm going to go ahead and um, bring this in. Now, we have done with our other things we've done the scan to direct cut this you can't direct cut because it knows the machine knows that this is not a cutting mat it knows it's a scanning mat so if i go to scan and i try to go direct cut it's going to yell at me look i can't even i can't even it cannot use it, it says mat cannot be used so let's go back and let's grab scan to data now when you do this this is going to take a little bit longer <clears throat> Now it says scan, move the lever to number two, which is that lever on the side. And then I can just say start. Now, since this is going to put it in memory, it's thinking a little bit more about the image that's on that paper and it's going to analyze it a little bit more. So it's going to take a couple of seconds longer. So I do have a couple more samples I wanted to show you with sticker vinyl. So well, or with the, the vinyl. So this was just sticker vinyl, and isn't he hilarious? So the little bag had the stripes, but the little crab is with sticker adhesive vinyl. I thought that was really darling. And then on here, this is um, heat set vinyl. And this is a galvanized bucket, but you can use the same heat set vinyl that we used for t-shirts, and you can put it on firm articles that can take heat. I used a heat, a heat tool to adhere this on here. Did we get any answer back from specifically on the cards, what she wanted to, to know? Not yet, but we did have another question of, um, any recommendations for cutting craft text? Craft text. No, that, that will just do beautifully on here. So I just use your black, your standard blade. Now, if you don't know what craft text is, uh, Obviously, the person who asked the question does. But craft text is really a fun thing. It's a, it's a man-made fiber. made Well, it's kind of like paper, but it's not. It's really strong. If you've ever seen a pair of Levi's and that brown patch on the back on the hip that says Levi's, that's basically the same thing that craft text is. So it's very, very strong. You can make it tote bags and all sorts of things out of craft text. So if you're going to do that, I would just use your standard blade, the black one, and it's just going to cut a couple of times. So it, it should do really, really well. If your purple mat or your standard mat isn't firm enough, sticky to hold it, then use either a new standard mat with a high uh, tack car fabric carrier sheet or your fabric mat for your craft text. But it should, it should cut absolutely beautifully. So that should be fun. Okay, so I've got this in um, the machine now. It has found that piece. So I'm just going to crop around it because I don't need it to remember everything. I just want it to remember the design and then say okay then it's going to want to know where I want to put that image so I can choose if I want to put it in the machine or if I want to save it onto a USB stick so either way I can do that now this is a cool thing sorry Carrie come back in 
So before it asks me that, it wants to know how I want it cut out. Do I want to cut it out on the outside like a cookie cutter? So now it's found all the shapes on the outside. But did you see how the inside where it says Independence Day is not, there's no line around that? If you had something that you wanted the insides cut as well, that's what this one is. This one is insides and outside. So now can you see how the Independence Day is bold? It's, it found that as well and it will cut that out as well. So if you have a piece of artwork that you want to cut but you don't want the words gone, then just use the outer edge and then I can say OK. And then it's going to save it either on a stick or onto the machine, or if I was hooked up to my Wi-Fi, which I'm not, I could send it back to my computer. Okay, so really, really fun and easy. Um, and yeah, it's just really, really a pretty cool thing. So, okay, um, I'll try to get, I'm gonna guess a little bit at her question on, um, on the uh, cards. If you are interested in card making or anything like that, or there's a specific project you want to do, take a look at them at canvasworkspace.com. And that is a um, free program or app from Brother that you can access on your computer. You can access it on your phone if you want to. It's easier to see on your computer. But it's basically the workings here in a bigger form. Because like I said, you never have to even interact with a computer on this. So if you're not computer savvy, don't even worry about it because it does it. It has all its brains that it needs. It doesn't need any help from anything else. But in that workspace, you're going to be able to find projects like cards and other things. And they have full tutorial videos on the projects with most of the projects that are on the workspace there. Okay. okay so she did send more information. She said she's beginning. She's just beginning. So how to cut out card designs, borders, etc. She wants to cut out backgrounds to attach quilling items or insert pictures she takes inside of the card. Okay. Okay. I was, this one doesn't have the clear plastic on it. So, um, I had to rip it apart there. Let me see if I have, make sure I've got what I want. I'm going to take their paper because I don't have a piece of paper. Okay. All right. So if, um, okay. So if, if you have a project that you want to, uh, do some fun stuff with borders, uh, a frame, an area, things like that. Let's take a look at that real quick. And I was still in the other thing, so it was mad at me. Oh, it's upside down. Oh, look at that. It, it rejected it because I put it in upside down. See, it's so smart. It is so, so smart. Let's try that again. Oh, and I have it going in crooked. No, 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 no. Back up, back up. Stop, stop, stop. Unload the mat. Unload the mat. See what happens when you don't pay attention? Oh, and it's so, being so gentle and it's unloading so slowly. Just get out, 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 get out. Oh, okay. Phew. Save that. Because you know what happens if you do that? You might crinkle your mat and it won't work the next time. That's always fun. Okay, so let's try that again. All right. Okay, so let's talk about elements for whether it be a card or <coughs> if you want to create uh, a quilt label, anything like that. Let's go in here and let's just look at our basic shapes. So if I wanted to create a background, I could choose this wonderful little scalloped border and we can change that. <coughs> so right now it is three and nine fourths. So maybe I want it to be four and a quarter because four and a quarter is um, a standard card size, right? For an A2. So we're just going to go 4.25. Two, three, four. So there's four and a quarter. Now, if I touch this, it's going to allow me to change the top without changing the width. So now I can take this up to five and a half. So I have my five and a half by four and a quarter. And so there's my piece right there. So I can use that as a background for your quilling or for whatever you want to do. It also could be a cute little label for a quilt label. Okay. If you want to find more designs, if we come into our patterns and you want to do a border, whoops, I just passed it. Here's borders right in here. So you can choose things. Now, wouldn't this be cute to have a piece of fabric that has 
fusible on the back of it. Now the fabric I cut earlier was just straight fabric. It didn't even have fusible on it, but you can make your own rickrack. So just put some fusible on the back of your fabric so you can iron it into place. So there's lots of fun things. And of course you can do lovely uh, paper crafting with this as well and use that as elements on your cards. So if and if there's a lot of um, paper artists out there that are actually using their scanning cuts, so there's lots of videos that you can um, go and enjoy and watch uh, with people that do that. Okay, so, but we don't have one specifically on the card making. Okay, another thing I want to show you really quick is I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to grab a simple little shape. I'll grab the little heart. I always like the little heart. There's a heart in here with the cute little scallops around the outer edge, and I just think it's so cute. And I'm going to make him a little bit smaller and then say set. And then I'm going to move him over, how about to this corner? Well, I'll show you something else here in a minute because I didn't do it, but I want to draw. Now, this, this, you can get a really cool pen holder for the machine. And this is a pen holder, universal pen holder. And it just, it has this little uh, tool that you set it into there. Okay, so I have a Sharpie marker. This is one thing I really like about the Scan and Cut is you don't have to use specific branded pens. You can use whatever pen you want. So to get the pen, we're going to use this little mounting piece to set the depth of the pen tip so it's appropriate for our fabric. But uh, to get the pen in there, we start by lift this gray collar right here. I'm going to lift that up and turn it over to open it up and it's open when it's all the way to the right. Okay, so then I'm gonna slide my pen, pen in and I need to know where to sit that so it will stitch or uh, draw correctly. So I set it in here, oops, 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 oops. And it, the pen is touching the bottom there. See how the pen is down? I'm sure you can see it because I just drew all over everything. Now I'm gonna lift that collar and turn it to the right to tighten it up. Now I can just simply lift that up and pop that in in there and now it's going to be able to draw for us so i'm going to say okay please select draw and then have it draw i should say uh actually should say start and then it will do it um and so you're going to find some really fun things the machine actually comes with a smaller version oh oh my goodness i had it put it where there's no paper <laughs> So I just drew right on the mat. Did it do a great job? And it's a permanent Sharpie. So, hey, yay. <laughs> Let's, there's a, something I, <laughs> Carrie's, Carrie's enjoying this actually at this moment. So, um, yeah, thanks, Carrie. Okay. <laughs> Katrina's asking, is that just a regular Sharpie? This is just a regular permanent Sharpie that I just wrote on the mat with. It is just the regular one. Now, let's talk about that just for a second. Those of you who know about Sharpies, you know that they are an alcohol marker, basically. And so the little slip that I made here on the top of the machine, I'm going to be able to get that off with, off with just isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol. But do not put rubbing alcohol anywhere near your mats, anything that has any alcohol in it, because it will de-stick it. So don't, don't do that. So I'm going to live with this cute little heart, and every time I see it, I'm just going to giggle. So, um, okay, but what I did want to show you is, see if I have something, I wanted to, sh oh, here, I can do this. Okay, let's say that's, no, well, that's not, that's too fat. <laughs> this will work. Okay, the machine has that built-in scanner, so not only can it scan so you can see stuff, but it's going to be able to scan so you know where you want to draw, right? Okay, so I'm going to say okay, and then I'm going to uh, load my mat again. Oh, I did it again. Holy moly. I am not paying attention is what I'm doing is what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm just not paying attention. Well, several people have said that it's nice to know that they're not the only ones that do things like that. You know, so here's the fun part. I have some co-workers that I love dearly, dearly love them. But if you watch the one on the free motion quilting where I couldn't find the, the foot, you know, but to my defense, the foot was on a clear table, so therefore I could not see the foot. I am never going to live that one down. So, um, yeah. 
They love making fun of me. So, okay, so here's my thing. You can use this for fabric, you can use it for paper, whatever you want to do. But we're going to go back and I'm going to use this button right here. And I'm actually going to scan the mat and it's going to take a picture of what's on the mat. So then you can place your item right where you actually want it to be so it won't uh, draw on the mat. So you're going to see this come up here now and we'll have Carrie come in. So there's my envelope, right? So I could actually move that right over. No, oh, there's my drawn. It took a picture of my drawn art, but now I could come and say, okay, and then I could draw right on this pr pretty envelope. And if you do make your own cards, how beautiful is that to make a custom envelope to go with it? Lovely, lovely. So yeah. Um, so yeah, don't, don't, don't draw on your mat unless you want to. I guess you could do that, but don't do it. So any other questions that we have? Okay. Um, so Carrie, are you game? And I know you'll say yes because you don't have a choice, but I, <laughs> she's holding the camera and I'm going to say something. So she just goes with it, but I want to show you a couple of things. So if you have a scan and cut and you want to use your scan and cut to its fullest capacity, there is the scan and cut playbook. And this has a USB. Look, I sh just showed you all the title pages, didn't I? But in here, there are pictures and how to's and the what to do's and all that sort of stuff in here. And there is this is like 300 pages, I think, or near it. And this has all tons of information in it for you. It also comes with a um, USB with files and everything for you to do your own little lessons. Uh, speaking of classes, we have a great gal who's one of our local gals. She's one of our SoFun gals, Naomi Human, who does uh, virtual scan and cut classes. So they're through Zoom. And you can sign up to do, for those on our website, which is qualitysewing.com. And no matter where you live, you can attend one of her awesome classes. And they're really, really are good classes. And if you take a look to the left, Carrie, we have lots of different colors of sticker vinyl. All the top is all sticker vinyl. And then we have lots of the heat set vinyls and glitter vinyls on the bottom. And then we're going to take a walk over here to the other side because over here we have lots of different accessories. So we have mats that are short and we have the 24 inch mats. We have uh, kits like the paper piercing kit, the rhinestone kit. We have the high-tech carrier sheets. There's also stencil sheets or stencil materials so you can make your own stencils. And then look at all the fun stuff that we have for the scan and cuts here. There's more over here. So whatever your project is, we probably have the right stuff for you. And like we alluded to earlier, there's lots of new stuff, including that rotary blade that's coming out for the scan and cut. And so you'll see more about that at our What's New parties in September. And please make sure to sign up for those because it's not a walk-in this year. We, we are asking that people register for those classes so they have a seat because we're trying to maintain safe distances and, um, and healthy environments for everyone who is involved. So um, anyhow, like and share this video. And if you want to watch it again, come back to Facebook or Instagram or go to our YouTube channel. And if you have any questions, type them down there and we'll look back at that. But I'm so glad you joined us today. And um, anyway, happy scanning cutting and we'll talk to you later.